some things that you need to remember about this activity that I've assigned to you is the concepts about parallel lines cut by transversal. There are some angles that are formed that are congruent and supplementary. Angles 2 and 3 are a linear pair, so they're supplementary. They're going to add to be 180 degrees. Angles 2 and 4 are vertical angles, so they're equal to each other. Angle 1 and 3 are vertical, so they are equal to each other. This transversal intersects the two parallel lines at the same angle. So 6 and 8 are vertical and congruent. 5 and 7 are vertical and congruent. 6 and 7 are a linear pair. 5 and 6 a linear pair. 5 and 8 and 8 and 7. So all linear pairs add to be 180. But because the transversal is intersecting the parallel lines at the same angle, then angle 2 and angle 6 are congruent because we call them corresponding angles. Angle 3 and angle 7 are congruent because they're corresponding. Because 2 and 4 are vertical, they're congruent, which means that 4 and 6 are congruent, and we call those alternate interior. 3 and 5 are congruent because they also are alternate interior. Now angle 3 and angle 1 are vertical angles, so they're congruent. So 1 and 5 are congruent because they are corresponding. And then 6 and 8 are congruent because they are vertical. So when we have two lines parallel cut by a transversal, there's actually just two different degree measures. For example, if I knew angle 2 was 70, then I would know angle 1 to be 110. And then 3 would be 110. 7 would be 110, and 5 would be 110. 4 would be 70, 6 would be 70, and 8 would be 70. So we're using a little bit of this information when we begin to look at the square that I gave you from page 20. So let's see if you were able to find the angle measures. For one thing, they give you this angle to be 30. That's helpful if you recognize that we have a right triangle here. So this is a 90 degree angle. So 30 and 90 is 120. So that leaves this angle to be 60. Also, if we think of a billiard ball being hit at this location, it comes into the wall we found at a 60 degree angle and it bounces off the wall at the same angle that it enters. So that leaves this angle to be 60. These have to all add to be 180. So if this is 60 and this is 60, so would this one. And then I have another right triangle. So I have a 90, a 60, so this has to be 30. And if the ball comes in at a 30 degree angle, it's going to exit at a 30. So that means that this angle would have to be 120 in order to make the straight angle of 180 degrees. 
So if this is 30, I have another right triangle. So the ball is entering at a 60, it will exit at a 60. So that makes this angle to be 60 as well. Now, I have another right triangle here. This one is 60, this is 90. So that makes this angle 30. So this angle would have to be 60. I have an equilateral triangle, 60, 60. So this one's 60. These are vertical angles, so they have to be the same. That gives 60, 60. So this has to be 60 as well. And then these are a linear pair. So they have to add to be 180. So this would have to be 20. These are vertical, so they have to be 120. So you had to use a lot of information there about vertical angles, linear pair of angles, uh, supplementary, right triangles, uh, equilateral triangles. And then we find that this makes um, a rhombus and this is an isosceles triangle. Now how we're going to use this is to study some concepts about a billiard table. We're going to make some rules about our magical billiard table and the rules are our table has to be a rectangle. It has no pockets. It has no friction. It has no spin. The ball always travels in a line. And the ball stops when it hits a corner. Now we're going to be making use of Snell's Law, which says that Assuming a frictionless environment and no spin on the ball, the ball traveling toward a wall at an angle will rebound at the same angle. So we're going to describe the path of the ball either by the angle that it is hit, or we will describe the path of the ball by the slope. So if you had a ball that was hit at a slope of one half, that means the ball would rise one and run two, rise one and run two. Now you will need graph paper to do the work from this section. So let's say that we have our billiard table. This is an 8 by 5 table. The 8 is always vertical. And the 5 is always horizontal. So the first number gives you the vertical dimension. And that's very important that you remember that. Because if you switch the dimensions, then the path of the ball is not um, accurate. Your answers won't be accurate. I'm going to be interested in how many hits that it takes. Now a hit means how many times it touches the wall before it goes into a corner. Now when it lands in a corner it stops. So I want to know which corner it lands in. This would be the upper left corner, the upper right corner, and the lower right corner. And you will always hit the ball from here. This will be your beginning point and this is called the first hit. So this is one. So if I hit the ball with a slope of one half, 
that means that the ball will go rise one and run two rise one and run two and so the ball is going to go into the wall like this and it will exit the wall at the same angle where you will be going up one left two up one left two and so on normally we are going to say that we are hitting the ball with a slope of one or at a 45 degree angle now a typical billiard table is twice as long as it is wide so if I had the typical billiard table that's eight feet long it would be four feet wide if you go by so eight is the t vertical four is the horizontal so typically it's twice as long as it is wide so let's say that I hit the ball at a slope of one that means I always begin here I'm going up one, right one, up one, right one, up one, right one, up one, right one. So this is hit number two. Then I go up one, left one, up one, left one, up one, left one, up one, left one, and I am ending up here. So this has three hits and it ends in the upper left corner now we're going to want to look at some patterns that are forming we'll be looking at the dimensions of the table in its reduced form so if I reduce 8 by 4 I can divide both numbers by 2 so the reduced dimensions of the table would be 2 by 1 I want to look at a relationship between the reduced factors and the number of hits and whether it lands in the upper left, upper right, or lower right corner, and is there symmetry? Now, the symmetry we're going to be looking for is horizontal line, meaning can I draw a horizontal line fold and map the top to the bottom so this case this one does have horizontal line symmetry you will also check for vertical line symmetry so this does not have vertical line symmetry because I cannot map the left side to the right side we're also going to be looking for rotational symmetry and that means that I am going to pick it up and do a 180 and map it back onto itself so when I look at it like it is if I pick it up and do a 180 does it look the same and that is no so the only type symmetry that this has is horizontal line so I'm going to give you some dimensions in a table and you will take those dimensions you will draw your billiard table you will follow the path of the ball using a slope of one you will count the number of hits that it takes to land in a corner you will identify which corner it lands in 
and you will identify the type symmetry that the table has. And then you will make conclusions on this information about the tables.